Hello, my name is Ryan Dark and I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS application engineer here at Go Engineer. In this Go Engineer Quick Tips video, I will be discussing the best practices of doing a mesh control on an assembly that is having mesh issues that are causing some of the bodies to fail. So before you, you see a part, a PCB board with some components on it, I have applied some heat loads. I'm interested in seeing how the heat transfers through this object. So I start out with trying to create a mesh just at default settings. Let's see what happens. You notice immediately some of the parts are failing. I don't know why yet, but this error is just telling me these bodies are having issues meshing. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and right click the mesh, go into failure diagnostics. It gives me some more explicit data on what is failing in my mesh. Um, if I select it, it tells me these edges are causing a mesh failure on that object. This body has a mesh failure due to the element size. Some more edges are having issues down on this object again. So uh, what we can do with this is if I select this mesh failure, it selects all the edges for me. I can exit out of the mesh diagnostics. It keeps them selected. And if I immediately go into right-clicking mesh and applying a mesh control, it populates my selected entities list with all of those edges that were a problem. So I can apply a mesh control to all of them very easily. They're all automatically selected. So I'm going to leave the, the mesh density at its default center position and go ahead and accept that and go back into my failure diagnostics and grab my other edges that were an issue here and do the exact same thing with them. So now I have two mesh controls covered. Uh, you'll notice that my third mesh control is a little more vague, or my, my mesh error is a little more vague. It just says surface mesh successful, volume mesh failed. Usually that just means exactly what it says. Reducing the element size and increasing the number of elements is going to help this. So I don't know how much to decrease the size, so I'm going to go directly into the part itself. And I'm going to make a dummy study that I can just mesh at default settings and see what size I should be applying to this. So I'm creating mesh inside the part. I turn on mesh parameters, set its default center position, it's meshing at 0 0.072 inches. I'll just keep that in mind. Go ahead and mesh. It meshes fine. So this element size should be sufficient back in the assembly as well. So I'm just going to take it back into the assembly and apply that size as a mesh control on that, that body. So uh, right-clicking the mesh, apply mesh control. I just come into my list of parts, wait until I get to the one that I want to highlight here. There we go. And I'm going to type in 0 0.072. So now I have mesh controls applied to each of the mesh failures that I had in the model. I can go ahead and right-click mesh once more. I did not adjust my global mesh size. Go ahead and mesh. And this time around, all of the bodies are able to mesh. Now this is important because I've saved solve time by not reducing the size of elements of bodies that didn't require it. This uh, cylindrical component didn't require any, any smaller elements, so it can be coarser. It saves me solve time. So uh, just a little thing to keep your studies running more efficiently and get you through the meshing process so you can get down to getting some results and, and affecting your designs from that. So this has been Ryan Dark with Go Engineer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out our other videos for more tips on using SOLIDWORKS.